Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about Supermicro X9 SCA, X9 SCA-F, and the chassis that it goes inside, the CSE 813M. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Supermicro X9 SCA-F. If you find anything useful in this video, do us a favor and click that like and smash that subscribe. Well, first things first, uh, the uh, X9 SCA family as a whole, or both of them, or there's two boards, uh, people go, what's the difference? Uh, the Dash F has IPMI capabilities. The one that doesn't have the Dash F has no IPMI. So if you want IPMI, just make sure that you get the uh, Dash F. So we'll, uh, we'll start with that. Uh, as far as the uh, CPUs are concerned, uh, it has one CPU socket. It's an LGA 1155 socket. Uh, it takes uh, a couple of different CPUs. Uh, the most notable one, and what we always recommend to people, is the Intel Xeon E3 1200V1 or V2 series. And what I personally like is the uh, E3 1200 uh, or 1240V2 and the E3 1270V2. Uh, those seem to be the um, the best bang for your buck and what people like the most uh, as far as our customers when we're building. Uh, but you can also use a couple of different Intel Pentium and Celeron uh, series processors, and you can also use Intel second and third uh, gen core i3 processor. So yeah, there's a whole bunch of different processors that you can use for this little tiny machine, and it's it's a, a wonderful um, a server for low-end applications. And one other thing to note, it's an ATX motherboard, okay? Uh, well, let's hop into the RAM. Uh, it is a DDR3 machine. It has four uh, DIMM slots. Uh, it takes a, a couple of different speeds. You can go as low as 1066, 1333, um, 1600, and technically you can put in 1866, but I will tell you in advance it's just going to clock back down to 1600. So if it costs more, then there's no real advantage for you. Uh, so we always tell people just to get to six, uh, the 1600. But we like to note that in case you have some 1866 laying around, yeah, you could throw it in. Okay. Um, as far as the size that you can use, you can use a 1 gig, 2 gig, 4 gig, or all the way up to an 8 gig. No, unfortunately, you cannot use 16 gigs. 8 gig is the absolute highest that you can use and there is one type of RAM that you can use for this machine and that is ECC unbuffered which is also known as a server UDIM. Unfortunately no you cannot use EC registered and no you cannot use LR DIMMs only ECC unbuffered and with ECC unbuffered the max that you can get is 32 gigabytes using four 8 gigs at 1600 megahertz. Alright well now that we know a little bit more about the uh, memory and CPUs Let's go ahead and pop it open, uh, and I'm going to show you um, how to physically install the RAM, talk a little bit more about the channels, uh, but before we do, I'm going to grab my ESD gear, because really you never want to be inside the machine without ESD gear, so I'll be right back. All right, now that we have our ESD gear on, we're safe to open the machine and prevent it from electrostatic discharge. Uh, before we open this up, one of the things I did want to note, we're going to add a link to the top uh, that goes to a very, very similar system to this. It is the X9 uh, SCM. Um, and of the family of motherboards that's very, very similar to this. Prox and RAM are the exact same. And then we're also going to put a link up right after that uh, to the X9SCL. Uh, same DAC deal, same processors, uh, same RAM. So uh, very, very similar to this family of motherboards. Okay, so you're going to push these two uh, tabs in, and you're just going to pull back, and you'll see this, uh, the space will separate, and you're just going to lift the top up. Uh, I do personally like the latches that uh, HP and Dell have over these uh, put bu push button mechanisms, but that's just my, my personal preference. But anyhow, all right, now that we're in, as we discussed, there's one CPU. Uh, this CPU controls the four DIMM slots over here. Um, there are uh, two memory channels, and each memory channel has two DIMMs uh, per memory channel. So uh, if you're wondering what's the start of the channel, it is the black DIMM slot and the blue DIMM slot is the second in the channel. So for instance, if you were only going to put in two modules, you'd want to put them at the start of the channels, which are the two black slots. Uh, the reason that you'd want to do this is you want to maximize your overall performance and you don't want to overload one channel and then have the other channel not working for you at all. So it's really just having a, a good even distribution of your load uh, to just maximize your performance. Of course with a machine like this that only has four slots, personally I recommend just maxing it out and uh, putting in 32 gigabytes, but I do understand that for a lot of the uh, low end customers out there, 16 gigabytes will, will, will get you what you need. So um, alright, well we're going to go ahead and fill 
physically install them now that we know a little bit more about the channels uh, one of the things that I do want to note before we get going uh, you will see right here in the module there's a notch and this notch is also known as a key the key is very important because it's not perfectly in the center and you need to make sure you line it up properly in the slot because the slot if you can see it's kind of tough on the camera but there is a notch in the middle and that notch is sticking up it's a little plastic piece so if you don't line it properly with the key because uh, the key will fit into that notch uh, it could damage the uh, uh, the the leads on the module potentially you know rendering the module useless or even worse it could damage the dim slot and break the motherboard and that you definitely don't want to have to replace the motherboard over something as simply as you know lining up your module so uh, I know it's, it's really simple but it is a common user error so we like to tell everyone in advance just to be extra safe so uh, the other thing that I also like to do I like to pop open all my tabs in advance it just makes it a lot easier uh, when I'm going that I'm not fumbling around or a tab is preventing me from inserting a module so all right now that you see I have put the first one in and it, it looks like it's in I'm not touching it it's sitting there it feels like it should should you know work like this I'll tell you it's not going to work like this uh, and unfortunately this is a very common user error that we also see so I always stress this as well you need to, to make sure that the tabs are fully uh, inserted into the sides of the module so you hear these two clicks so listen for these clicks click one click two and what that's done is you can see the tabs have officially uh, grabbed the notches on the side of the module and pulled it down uh, making sure that the leads are all fully inserted into the dim socket okay so this is very important uh, and I know again that that I'm you know stressing something that's honestly relatively easy but it's one of the most common errors that we see so we just always tell people so that they're extra safe with it. Uh, it it never hurts to take an extra second or two at a time just to make sure that you're, you're doing stuff properly so uh, and again I will note um, if you are only putting in two modules you're gonna want to put them into the two black slots and you're gonna skip the two blue slots but of course I'm maxing it out so I'm putting it in all four so uh, and just like that you can see in a matter of I mean really what did this take a, a minute if you're doing it in real time it probably take you I mean it will probably take you longer to to walk down uh, the hall to the data center to your uh, to your rack than it will to actually put the modules in. It's just it's a very simple and easy process, and that's a, a, something that I always tell people as well. That even if you are not a uh, server technician, let's say you're just using this at, at your office, like you're a you know a dentist office or doctor's office or whatever, and you're just using it there, and and you want to upgrade it yourself. Honestly, it's very very easy to do. Um, you know, I would still recommend if you don't know what you're doing, having a technician come out and help. But it, it, it's honestly, it's very, very simple to do. So anyhow, you just put the top back on and you're done. Um, if you guys need any upgrades for your X9 uh, SCA, then do us a favor and email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com or give us a ring at the number below. And hey, appreciate you stopping by. If you found anything useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. Have a great day.